All right, I will be discussing using a table to show the function, the original function and its inverse function, as well as the graph that is attached to it. So for the first table that you see, that is my original function. It has the column X and F of X. Well, remember F of X is really Y. So don't forget that, okay? And if I'm trying to find the inverse point, what I would do is I would remember from the finding inverse video where I talked about swapping your X's and your Y's first. So again, my first table has a Y over here. So I'm going to swap it with my X values of my inverse table. So what's shown in my F of X, which is really Y column, that's what's going to go in my X column of my inverse table. So I have a negative nine, positive five, seven, and nine. And then what I do is I take all of the X values and I'm now going to swap those and put them in the inverse F of X. Or it depends who you're talking to, F inverse of X, inverse F of X, however you want to say it. I want to put those X's in that column. So negative two, negative one, zero, and one. So what you should notice is all I did was swapped out my X's and Y's. That's when you are already given a table and you're trying to find the inverse points. Sometimes you're, and let's just go ahead and graph this. So I've already graphed the original function. Let's attempt to graph the inverse function. So that's gonna be negative nine, negative two, five and negative one, um, seven and zero, and nine and one, that's what I have in my table. So I'm going to try my best to graph this correctly. So it looks something like this, not gonna be perfect. And what you are looking for, we already know it's an inverse because I just showed you how to do it in the table, but sometimes you're given a graph and what you would be looking for to see whether or not it is an inverse is whether or not the graph reflects over the line of reflection. That line of reflection is referred to as y equals x. So let me write that down, line of reflection. And that tells you whether or not your graphs are inverses of one another. So just think of y equals x. It's literally what it says. So if you're setting up a table, If X is one, well, Y is one because they have to be equal, right? If X is zero, so is Y. And if X is negative one, you guessed it, Y is also negative one. So what you're looking for is a dashed line that will cross over the Y equals X, which is gonna create the line of reflection. So let's just do that one for X and then one for Y. So somewhere right here, zero, zero, that's the origin, and then negative one, negative one. That's enough points to kind of see that, yes, that's going to actually, those graphs are going to reflect, sorry, it's not neat, but it's going to reflect over that y equals x line, so therefore I know I have a inverse graphs. So again, sometimes you will actually be given a table, and then you'll have to determine what your inverse points will be and all you're doing is swapping them and then sometimes you're given the actual graph and what you're looking for is whether or not they intersect I guess I should say that um, across this line of reflection the line of reflection is known as y equals x keep that in mind all right so let's just go over this sometimes you might see a table that's given and the directions are asking you to evaluate composite functions. So we just talked about this on the quiz. When you are talking about composite functions, that's a function within a function. So this is what your first example looks like. I told you in another video to, it might be helpful if you were to rewrite this. So that's what I would do. This really is saying F of G of two. So that may be helpful to somebody to see it that way. 
what you're trying to do, and I'm just gonna use a darker color for you. All right, the first thing you wanna do is identify X. Well, X is here. Because remember, it's really F of G of X. So when X is two, let's go up to our table. When X is two, oops, didn't mean to do that. Then I wanna look in that column because I have a F of X and I have a G of X. I wanna look in this column and follow my instructions. Where did they ask me to go? They said when G, I mean, when X is two, what is G of X? So G of X would be one. So it's just easier to just keep track of what's going on. So G of X is now one. Well, don't forget that one is representing X. So now I have to go back to the top where it's X and look for one. And then it's asking me, well, when it's one, what is F of X? Yeah, confusing, right? So we're gonna go down to F of X and we see that when X is one, F of X is four. That's how you do it if you're just trying to go step by step by step. But the more that you see it, it will jump out at you. It'll go a little faster. All right, so for the next one, like I said, I personally will rewrite it. G of F of zero, because this is an open circle. That's not a multiplication sign or zero. So I am for, I'm starting off with my X values. These are my actual columns that I'm working with, X, F of X, G of X. When X is zero, what is this time, what is F of X? So I'm gonna go to where X is zero and look for F of X and I see that it's two. So F of X is two, but this two is still representing X. So we have to go back to the X column row and look for two. So when X is two, what is G of X? That's what we're looking for. And we see that it's one. So when X is two, G of X is one. And notice order did matter. So you have to pay attention to what's inside versus what's on the outside. Okay, hope that helped you. Thumbs up, subscribe.